So today we're going to, I'll introduce myself, give you a little bit of background about me. Um, and then we'll kind of start talking about the, the vault. We'll have an overview. We'll talk about the requirements. We'll talk about installation, you know, how to download the installation files, how to get them installed. We'll do the server side, the client side, and we'll help you get everything set up. We'll go through the configuration of vault. We'll go through the configuration of inventor and really getting you guys started um, and ladies on uh, a good foundation so that as you learn to use the vault, learn to apply the vault in your daily routines, you'll have a good foundation so that you won't run into problems later. Um, if we have time at the end, we'll kind of go into some of the vault features that you will have access to and talk about how to use them and how to go through them. And uh, at the end, we'll have any have a Q&A. Also, at any point, if you want to throw questions in the chat, I'll try to answer them as I go. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. So my name is Emery. I am, the, like I said, application engineer here at Kativ. Prior to that, I was a mechanical engineer. I still am a mechanical engineer. Um, but I spent 10 years as a mechanical engineer. I designed winches and cranes. Um, in the lower left, you'll see a picture of one of the cranes that I designed. Uh, it's a 70 foot product boom, sits on top of a barge and it's probably somewhere out in Houston right now doing its thing. So if you guys ever wanna chat about winches and cranes, I would love to talk about those things too. So today we are gonna talk about Vault Basic but really the goal of this is for anybody who is new to Vault, new to data management, curious about what it, what it looks like, what it feels like. And I guess if you've ever asked any of these questions or thought to yourself, you know, I wanna use Vault, but I don't know how to get started. I've watched some videos, not really sure. You might be like me, the best way for me to learn is to take it apart, put it back together break it a few times. Um, if you've ever wanted to easily reuse content, you've wanted, maybe wanted a tool to manage your data, maybe your, your company currently uses a file share or OneDrive and it's not quite working like you hoped. Um, if you've ever wanted to keep up with version, version controls, who, who made this change? When did they make this change? Or if you've ever just wanted to search for a file, uh, I know it's very common to say, I, I know I designed this, it was a couple of years ago. I don't remember the part number. How am I gonna find this thing? So all of these things are available and actually super easy once you get it set up inside a vault. So just real quick, let's talk about vault in a, in a broad sense. Vault is made up of several components, but it's all hosted on one computer, a server. And it's made up of three parts. It's made up of the Autodesk Vault server, web server. Um, that is how Vault communicates is via uh, web traffic. Um, typically in a, in a standard installation, there would be multiple clients that would connect through some sort of network interface, whether it's local or wide area network to a Vault server. Um, so that's one part. The other part is the file store. The file store is all of your physical files, whether it's an IPT file, an IAM file, Word documents that hold, that hold design data, Excel files that hold design data. Vault can hold any type of file and associate metadata with those types of files. And the most impressive part about Vault is the database. So Vault runs Microsoft SQL SQL Server and that's kind of the glue that holds everything together. It holds all the metadata. It controls all the links between files. So an assembly holds X, Y, and Z parts. Um, it, it holds all of that metadata to make it searchable, to make it repeatable and reusable. And really is what is the magic that makes Vault pretty awesome to use. On this next slide, it's pretty busy but it kind of shows you the three levels of vault that are available. We're talking about vault basic today. 
Vault Basic is included in the product design and manufacturing collection. So if you use Inventor on a regular basis, it's highly likely that you already have Vault Basic available to you. And then you'll be able to do this, uh, follow this tutorial, install Vault on your machine at no extra cost. Uh, however, there's also two other level, levels of Vault Workgroup and Professional that offer additional functionality. And we, can, we will talk about some of those briefly, but for the most part, what Vault does is it allows you to search. It allows you to have all of your data in a central location. You can reuse your data. You can reuse designs and make it available for everybody on your team. Uh, some of the features that Workgroup and Professional offer are life cycles and revision controls. Um, and Vault Professional even offers ERP and PLM integration. So requirements for this setup. First thing you wanna do is make sure you have admin rights on your local machine. If you don't have admin rights, you're not gonna be able to do to install Vault and perform all the operations. Um, if you don't, talk with your IT department. Uh, see if they'll let you walk through this. Maybe they can watch this along with you. Um, to make sure they're on your team and you're not tearing something up per se. Um, either way. And then you want to make sure that your system can handle the vault. Let me pull up the system requirements. So when you look at vault 2022, you can see the requirements depending on which level you're using. Um, Windows 10 professionals for vault basic, what we're talking about today, vault comes with SQL Express. Um, that's included at no, no cost. Um, the real thing that you guys probably need to be concerned with is processor, RAM, and disk space. And be aware that if you're installing the Vault on your local machine, that you're going to need to run Inventor and Vault at the same time on the same machine. So, you know, it says eight gigs of RAM minimum. Just be aware that that's concurrent with uh, Inventor or AutoCAD or other programs that you're using at the same time. The other thing to consider would be your disk space. Um, your, when you host the files, the physical files will be stored on your machine. So uh, you may want to consider having an extra hard drive or pointing to uh, a larger hard drive on your system. So next, we're going to cover uh, downloading the install files. Uh, for this part of the, the process, just sit back and take notes. I pre-recorded this part because I edited out the, uh, the boring watching things download and spin parts. So just sit back, watch, um, and take notes. This video should be posted on YouTube in the next day or so. So you'll be able to go back and, and follow along and pause and repeat as you, as you need to. So to download the Vault Basic client and server installer, first thing we will need to do is open our browser and navigate to manage.autodesk.com. As the picture loads, you will see on the left-hand side, there's a menu. We're looking for all products and services. And under products and services, uh, your screen will likely not look like mine, but if you'll scroll down or find product design and manufacturing collection, click on the carrot to the right or the left, click on view all included items. And that will bring up a list of all the programs and software included in the collection. You scroll all the way to the bottom. List should be in alphabetical order. You'll notice there's a Vault Basic client and a Vault Basic server. We'll need to download the installers and patches for both. Click to the right, we'll click View Downloads. And for this uh, demonstration, we'll be using version 2022, Vault Basic. We are going to change from 
Yours will likely say install now. You will want to change that to browser download. Once you've changed it, you can click browser download. It'll give you a warning about pop-ups and disabling them. Uh, those settings will be unique to each browser. You'll have to configure those yourself. Once you have that, once you have pop-ups blockers disabled, you can click start download. So you'll notice here the download has begun. While we're waiting, we'll also click on updates and add-ons. And there is a lot to choose from. So we will add some filters. Click on 2022, which is our version, and the Vault Professional Client. And we'll also click on update. Hit apply. It will narrow our choices down quite a bit till we see the 2022.2.2 update and the dot two update. We'll need to download both of those. Once you've got those started, you can close this. So VBC 2022 is what you see down here. It stands for Vault, Vault Basic Client. Now we need to download Vault Basic Server. Same process as before. 2022. Make sure that we're on browser download. Click browser download. Make sure pop-ups blockers are disabled and hit start download. Once again, we'll also need to download any patches. So go to updates and add-ons, click on add filters, version 2022, update, vault professional. Click apply, you'll see matching versioning for these two patches as well. Click browser download, click browser download. And now we wait. And as the last ones finish up, all your downloads are done. You can close your browser, open your downloads folder, and verify that you've got the Vault Basic Client installer, the Vault Basic Server installer, and then patches for both. And that's all. So before we move on, uh, I don't know if you, if you guys have any questions or want to throw anything up in the chat. I'm welcome to, uh, you're welcome to stop or throw that up there. We can stop and park on there or we can uh, keep pressing on. Um, <clears throat> Emery, we do have a question in the Q&A. Um, it's from Mario. Um, it seems like it might be a little bit about his experience at his workplace. So it says um, he has six Inventor and AutoCAD users working off a networked location. His management doesn't want to load Vault to server. Is there any benefit to having users individually load Vault onto their system? And can working folder be set to network folder access by individual vaults? Not sure. So, exactly. I, th I think I understand. So, so Mario, I would say that what you're trying to set up would not be ideal. Um, and not really the way that Vault is supposed to work. Um, so let me go back. Let me do this. So ultimately, if you have a server in a network location and they don't want to load Vault on that server, uh, the, the Vault server installation can only exist on one computer successfully. Um, at one time, and then you would have multiple clients logging into it. So technically, it would be possible to have one Vault server on one of the six users' computers and then have the other five users log in remotely from that. But that would assume you've got the right network access and some other caveats to that. Um, so it's possible. Um, also, that it would not really be ideal the, um, the ideal situation there would be to have another workstation brought in and have the server loaded onto that 
and have the six users remote or to log into the vault using their client on their machine there. That would be the ideal way to do it um, for that many users. The, what we're doing today is more of a sandbox environment to try and learn how to use vault. I hope, is that, I hope that answers your question. So the next one is on installation. Um, and this will kind of walk us through the install process. Once again, I pre-recorded this uh, just so that we don't sit and stare at the, the scroll bar go across the screen. It'll try to go pretty quick and keep it as painless as possible. There are a few little things that you need to watch out for. And uh, yeah, so just sit back and take notes. And if, like I said, the YouTube video will be posted hopefully tomorrow. So if you want to go back and pause and follow through as you go, it'll be there. Next, we'll be installing the Vault Basic server and Vault Basic client on your machine. Let's open the downloads folder. You should have already downloaded VBC Vault Basic client installer and VBS Vault Basic server installers along with all of the necessary patches. We're going to start with the server installation so let's double click on the installer here. The extractor will ask you where you would like to extract the temporary installation files. If you'd like to use a different folder than C Autodesk you can click change, select that folder or drive. Once you're done with that we'll click OK. After the extraction is complete the installation window should appear. First thing we need to do is click on Run Prechecks. This runs a series of tests to determine if the machine is ready to have the Vault server be installed. Frequently, the only action that will be required will be a reboot. So, we run into that here, and I'll show you how to do that. So, the first thing you'll need to do is click Cancel. Say you do want to exit, click on exit again, confirm that you're exiting, close everything out, and then you will need to reboot your computer. Now that we've rebooted, I'm going to go to File Explorer, type in C backslash Autodesk, open our Vault Basic Server install folder. Go down to setup.exe. We're going to double click. I'm going to click run prechecks again. We're all good to go, so we're going to click continue. And then we're going to click install. I accept. And next, here you can click on this arrow to configure the installation settings. Um, you should not change any of these unless you really know what you're doing. Uh, the same with the installation path, but if you'd like to change the installation path, you can click browse here and choose a different folder. We're not going to change anything, so we'll click install. And we wait. And there we go. Click launch now in the bottom right hand corner. Now is an important step. We want to click run later because we want to go ahead and patch before we set up our initial vault. We're going to click no. We're going to close the ADMS or Autodesk Data Management Server Console. Now return to our downloads folder we will want to install the vault server update and then we'll click close then we'll go and we'll install the second vault server update and we'll click close and now we're ready to install the Vault Basic Client. Once again, VBC Vault Basic Client. We're going to double click the installer. We're going to extract to the standard directory. Click OK. And now we'll 
wait for it to get started. At the next screen, click I agree. Click next. Choose the standard installation path. Click install. And we wait. All right. Then once you're done, you can click start to finish the installation. For now, we're just going to hit cancel. We're going to hit close. And now let's go install our vault client patches. So we'll go to Autodesk vault client 2022.2. Make sure you install your patches in order. Click install update. Then click finish. Next, we will install the vault client 2022.2.2 .2 update. Click install update. And then you click finish. And now we've installed the Vault Basic Client and the Vault Basic Server and all the patches. On your desktop, you'll find an ADMS console launcher and then the client launcher. And you'll need both of these to set up your Vault. All right, guys. So we are ready to start configuring Vault. Um, going to close the PowerPoint presentation and start doing the demo live now. Um, if you guys have questions, please, please post them in the Q&A. I'm going to try and keep that window open. So as I'm going, you guys, um, so that I can see what's going on. Nope, wrong button. There we go. So first thing we want to do is we want to, we're going to open our ADMS console. Autodesk data management server. And the first time you do that, it won't pop up like this. Uh, you'll see something like this. Let's say there are no vaults on this server. Do you want to create one now? Click yes, normally. And then you'll see a screen like this where you have a username administrator and a blank password. Vault out of the box, is, there's no password. It is our recommendation that you should set up a password for security um, because all of your data is here and access to it is controlled through this logon. So first time though, it's just a blank administrator and no password. So I've already set up a vault here, but for the purpose of this, we're gonna do another one. So inside of the ADMS console, you see the, this is my computer name, but then you can see vaults. You can, if there's libraries, management, a lot of other stuff here that's more advanced. Um, for today, well, let's just set up a vault. So on the vaults folder, you can right click and then click create. And we'll come up with a new vault name. Uh, it, this would be a time to uh, come up with a good name or a name you feel like you want to stick with. I want to call this one EZW test vault. Or let's do KVA vault. And here you can also cho choose a custom file store location. So like I said before, the file store can get very big because it holds all of your files. Um, if you want to put that on a separate drive, uh, this would be the time to do that now. It's, hard to ch it's very hard to change both the name and the file store location later. It can be done, but it's not pleasant. Um, if, you do, if you do choose this option, you can choose the three dots here and go to a D drive or an F drive or whatever you've got there with more space. For this, I'm just going to keep it default and click OK. Sweet. So we made a vault. Now we, we've created the server side file store. So there is, even though it's all on our machine, think of it in two separate buckets. The server side has been set up, but we need to create a local side, the client side. So we need to go to our C drive and we're gonna make a new folder called work. 
you can call this really whatever you want to call it. Sometimes uh, in the past, like right here, I've called it vault local files. Um, just as long as it's something that's easy to understand and is on the native C drive. So inside of the work folder or whatever you call it, you'll make two new folders. We'll call the first one designs. Call the next one content set. So now that we have that set up, we've got our server set. We got to do the inventor setup. So let's close that. Let's open inventor. And this is an important step because this, like I said before, it really builds a foundation for how your vault works going forward. So if you don't get this right in the front end, you're going to have trouble and struggles later. So the vault project is a real big, is a very key part of this process. So if you're not using vaults already, you likely have several uh, project files. One thing that's very key with vault is you use a single project file. Um, so we're gonna set that up now and I'll, I'll kind of give you the rundown of that as we go. So if you click on the projects screen, if you click new, you're gonna have either a single user project or a vault project. You're gonna go with a vault project. Um, I like to name this the same as my vault. So what did I just call this thing? Easy WKBA vault. So easy WKBA. So this workspace folder defaults to your documents. You're going to want to skip that and go to that folder we just set up. So click these three dots here, navigate to your C drive. I did that wrong and find your work folder. And there we go. It's gonna create the new IPJ file inside of that work folder. We're gonna click finish. So next thing we need to do is we need to uh, spell out the workspace. So in the workspace folder, even though we just defined it, uh, we're gonna spell it out even more clearly as C work. I'm going to click on it again just to be sure that it sticks. It doesn't leave the, uh... yep. So we've got it. That is correct. And then under folder options, we need to change our content center files. Actually, no, I lied. That's wrong. This needs to change to that designs folder. So you go down here under there and click designs. So your actual workspace will be one level below your C work file and designs. And your content center files will do the same thing. I get it to work, edit, there we go. You right click, click edit, open the file explorer, go down to your C work and then content center files. And sometimes things just don't work like you think they should. <laughs> so bear with, I'll try that again. Sorry for this. But ultimately the project file, uh, I'm assuming most of you have it familiarity with Inventor. That project file kind of dictates where on the local hard drive, uh, sweet, I kept it, where on the local hard drive, everything could be found. So, Having this in concert with Vault makes things work so much better. There's no more broken links, no more searching for things. It makes it very, very easy to manage your data once you get this set up properly. So now I've got this and hopefully, yeah, no crash, way to go. So now we've got our project file set up. We're gonna click done. I will actually make sure that this is the current project by double clicking on it. We'll click done. And we're gonna make uh, either, if you have data that you wanna check into the vault or you just wanna try something. For me, I'm just gonna do something real quick and real easy just to make it something to throw into that vault so we can get our project file checked in. So I'll make a real quick, washer. Okay. 
There we go. So when you click save, it automatically brought you to that C works designs folder. This is where Vault needs to have uh, parts or files located for you to check them in. So let's do, we'll call this. Yeah. So there are lots of ways to check in a file. Um, you can go to file, vault server, check in. Oh, we got to log in, don't we? So let's, yeah, go to the vault tab. The important step, is you got to log in. So the previous vault account or the, the vault we set up is we have administrator as our username. We don't need a password. And the server here, we're going to type in localhost. Localhost is just a, a way for your computer to know that it's the server is located on your computer. Um, and then we're going to click these three dots right here. And that should bring up a list of all the vaults that we have in our ADMS console. And that matches right here. So perfect. We're going to log into the KVA vault we just made. Click OK. So we're not logged in yet, but we don't need a password. So we hit OK. It spins. And now we are logged into vault. And so there are several ways to check in uh, a washer or check in the parts or any other design files into vault from the inventor interface. You can do it from the vault tab on the ribbon, like clicking vault and then check in. Uh, you can do it from the file vault server check in. It's a lot of clicks. My preferred way is I like to have on the model browser, I like to have my vault tab open and I can go here and right click and check in. Ah, this is a very common uh, error that people see when they set up their vaults for the very first time. It says your files cannot be added to the vault for the following reasons. Workspace has not been mapped. So that is one step that a lot of people forget. Um, I have already, I just forgot it. <laughs> so either way, you would click map folders here. It's a very simple process. For the project group, you would click edit and you select this uh, file with the money sign next to it. That is the root folder inside of your vault. And you click OK. And for content center files, you're going to hit edit. And under the project root, you're going to make a new folder. Click new folder. Make it sure that library is checked. And we're going to call it content center files. Just like we did when we set up uh, under the C work directory. And click OK. So now those two files are my, or those two those two uh, folders are mapped. And what that does essentially is it links your project file mapping in Inventor to the folder structure inside of Vault so that they know how to communicate with each other. So now that we've done that, now Vault and Inventor know how to talk to each other. And your KVA washer and your KVA uh, Vault project file are both ready for check-in. Um, before you check anything in, it's a good thing to change your settings. One thing that Vault's really good at is making it easy to quickly look at files, and it creates a it can create visualizations um, for each of your files. So if this box by default is not checked. You would want to check this box before you start checking in. Once you do it, it stays uh, stays put. So click OK. You want to put a comment in the comment box. You're welcome to. And that stays stored uh, in the metadata in the database with your washer part file. So these are checked in. Nope, we don't need this right now. Now that we've checked these in, we're going to open the vault client. Let's minimize this. And so here's your Vault Basic Launcher. I'm going to open this. Once again, and I did this prior, so that's why it's already kind of set up. You want to make sure your username is administrator, password's blanket first, server is local host. And then if you click these three dots, you'll be able to select the vault that's located on your server.
So once we're inside of the vault client, um, we need to do a few quick things. But first, let's check on our washer and see where it ended up. So content center files, and now we've got designs. So we can see right here that I checked in a washer, I put in my comment, and there it is. So now it exists inside a vault. Um, you can check in entire assemblies at one time to the vault this way. Um, and there, there, there are multiple ways to check in stuff. We'll, we'll cover that in a minute. But. So once you have your first part checked in, you've got your project file checked in. We need to enforce some basic rules that help that once again, kind of lay that foundation to make sure that you get started off on the right foot. So under administration, so you go to tools, administration, and then vault settings. We're gonna, we're gonna first thing we're gonna do is click enforce unique file names. And when you check this box, it means that you can't have two files inside the vault with the exact same name. And this is helpful with managing data, which means that if you have multiple people working in the same vault, you know, three different people can't check in the same bearing part number that are slightly different or, you know, that way, and then reduces duplicates, make sure that we're reusing content and that there's not multiple places to find design data so that one version is old and out of date and obsolete and a newer version should be being used instead. So this is helpful to reduce duplicates. Um, another thing we're gonna do is under the working folder, we're going to click the define button here. And instead of allow clients to define the working folder, we're going to enforce a consistent working folder. We're going to go, to go back and we're going to go find our C work folder and select that. And then we're also going to enforce a consistent project file for all of our clients. So that way, when you, no matter who's working in Inventor or Vault, the project file that is on, it's stored at the root is the one that you should be using. So it dictates that those have to be used in order to use this vault. So now we've set up our vault and we've set up Inventor. The only other thing we can do uh, as far as inside of Vault Basic right now would be as if we wanted to share uh, information with somebody else. So like back to kind of like Mario's question, if somebody else wanted to be able to log into the vault, um, if you had network access to your computer, um, we can set up multiple users. So let's go to tools, administration, global settings. Oops, drag it to the corner. Um, and here we will click the, under users and groups, we'll click manage access. So, I've already set up one, one user. I'll set up another one just so you guys understand. But these are all the users that are allowed to log into our vault. We're going to click new to set up a new one. And um, it's pretty straightforward. It's just type in the name. So we'll do Jane Doe this time. And then we've got to configure these four boxes. So accounts, you can use your Autodesk ID if you know if, if that's something you want to do. But traditionally, a Vault account is pretty straightforward. And this is where you can set passwords. So for Jane Doe, we're going to give her ABC123 as her password so that she can reset it later if she needs to, or we can if we need to. For her roles, this is where Vault is really, really powerful because you have multiple roles that you can assign to people. Administrator has full control. Um, and then the rest of them have lesser to varying degrees levels of control over the Vault. Um, content Center Administrator means that you can add to, take away, and delete from Content Center. The Content Center Editor means you can add to and edit content center, but no deleting. Document consumer out of the box would be someone who can look at files, but can't change them. 
document editor level one would be someone who could look at files and change them, but not delete. And then document editor level two has the delete possibility or capability. For Jane, I feel like she needs to be an administrator. So we're gonna set her up as an administrator and click okay. So I'm gonna click close and close. And we'll just test that out, make sure it works. We can file, log out, log in. We can do O, A, B, C, one, two, three. Oh, so we messed up. Let's go back and log in and see what we did wrong. So let's go to tools, global settings, manage access. So for Jane Doe, let's see what we did wrong. Ah, we, I went too fast. So under the vaults, you have to enable users for each vault. So unless a user is enabled, they cannot log into that vault. Uh, groups is another set of functionality. I don't think that's included. Groups is not included in Vault Basic. So we can close now. Log out, log in. Perfect. We are able to log in. Sweet. So let's go back to our PowerPoint, see where we're at. So we've added users and sharing data. Ah, now let's do some vault basic stuff. Um, do we have any questions in the chat? Not as of yet. So at this point, uh, your vault is set up. You've got your inventor open. You've got vault open. We'll pull them side by side so we can look at them. And now we got to, you know, let's add our data. One of the things that you're probably going to be confronted with is the idea that, well, my data is all over the place and I don't know how to get it into vault easily. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is Vault is not friendly to uh, drag and drop of, I say like this water heater IPT file. If I drag and drop this file into Vault, it should tell me I can't do this. Yes. So it'll tell you that water heater IPT cannot be added to Vault due to Vault restrictions. It says you must add design files to the Vault through the appropriate application. So. When it comes to CAD files, Vault requires you, whether it's a DWG or an IAM or an IDW, to add it through that program. So Inventor files need to be added through Inventor. DWGs would be added through Vault, or not Vault, uh, AutoCAD. Uh, other files like this BMP file could be added directly. So if we wanted to make a new folder and call it water heater, we could make a new folder inside a vault under designs, call it water heater. We can drag and drop this BMP file. Now it's in there and it's available. So, but what about getting this water heater in there? Um, this one doesn't have a project. File. Either way, um, what we can do is we can open this inside of Inventor. Brian, yes. So yes, it does include auto loader. I wasn't going to cover that because that's kind of pushing us on time. But yes, Vault Basic does include the auto loader. Um, I'm going to cover right now a pretty just a quick basic one. So you most likely are familiar with pack and go if you used inventor for a while it's a nice way to conveniently pack up everything yeah it's there's no active project file so if it doesn't have an active project file we're going to um, move everything over to our work folder so one thing that vault likes to do or needs is a folder structure in place so in order to get us get everything moved over and get it done correctly. The way, I, the way I like to do it is use pack and go. 
So um, this one is showing water heater I am. We're gonna move it, we're gonna make a new folder. So we'll change this folder to C work designs. And we have a water heater folder under designs, but it's not showing up on our local machine. But we want to make sure that our water heater gets checked in here. So one of the easy ways to do that is even though this folder doesn't exist, it, it kind of does because it's on vault. You can right click on that folder and you can do go to working folder. And what that will actually do is create a folder that mirrors vault inside of your designs folder so that it's already there. So we'll hit cancel here and go back and do it again. But so now that you're, we're working on changing our destination folder for this pack and go, we're gonna put it inside of our C work folder under designs and water heater and click okay. Um, I don't like a lot of folders inside of vault. So I'm gonna change this option here to keep folder hierarchy. We're gonna include linked files. And because there's no project file associated with this water heater, we don't have the ability to change this. If there was a project file available for water heater, then you could search based on that project file. But either way, we're gonna search. I'm gonna click search now. We came up with one, two, three, four, five files. That's easy. We're gonna click the start button here and click done. So we have now successfully pack and go, packed and gone. I don't know, yeah. Uh, our water heater, and it's at all the pieces over to our work folder, our right here, our working folder. So it's got, it's actually created a water heater IPJ work groups. It's got all the templates and all this stuff. Wow. We should have done that. Ultimately, all we're looking to include, though, is our new files. I wonder why I didn't do that. That's not right. Let's try this again. Let's go file. I'll go quickly, guys. I apologize about that. I clicked the wrong. So there we go. Yep. I'm skipping that. Sorry. Thank you, Brian. Um, yep. So now we're only sending five files. My bad. Click start. Click done. Now when we go inside of our water heater folder, it looks like what it's supposed to be. Just our stuff. So I'm gonna delete this water heater project file. We're gonna close this water heater. We're gonna go open water heater, water heater. So one last caveat that I'll throw out there before we wrap up with the Q and A is just because you have files inside of your local work folder under C, doesn't mean that they exist inside of vault. So you still have to check them in. So when you go to your vault tab under the model tree, you'll see circle with a plus. That means that it does not yet exist inside of vault. Let's see what I hover. Tell me. But what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna right click, we're going to check in. It's going to bring in all of our files. Make sure we check in. Click OK. There you have it. So if we go into our water heater folder, now we see all of our design data and the associated metadata. And the cool thing here is if we wanted to know, I think regulator. So we can search inside of our root 
level and find anything with the word regulator in the title or any of the metadata, um, water, lots of water heater. So that's a quick rundown. Now you guys are kind of dangerous and uh, ready to try your own hand at learning to mess around with Vault. And one last thing I'll throw out there. Once you have Vault installed and you're working on it, if you run into a roadblock or run into something that you're not sure about, um, the Autodesk support page is very, very helpful. And you can get there by going to autodesk.com and then support. If you click on product learning and support, scroll down and you'll find the vault product section. Under learn, there's all kinds of great videos and content for you guys to look at and consume. It'll give you a walkthrough of most of the stuff I covered today and a lot more. So you guys are welcome to jump in there. I'll put that in the chat. Anyhow, today, I hope that I was able to be helpful. We covered Vault Basic as an overview, kind of how architecturally how it functions, run through ins installations, configuration, talked about how it works with Inventor, and we did a Vault Basic, kind of a quick demo. Um, and those are the things we covered. Uh, so yeah, if you guys have any questions, throw them in the question or answer or the chat. I'm happy to answer them all. If you have questions after today, uh, you can reach out to support at kativ.com. You can send them to me, emory.wiley at kativ.com or data management at kativ. That sends it to the whole data management team. So. And yeah, like I said, support at kativ.com. Next week, we'll have another KVA. I uh, hope you guys are excited to see that one as well. It will be awesome. If you want to sign up for that so that you get reminders, you can go to kativ.com slash learn and sign up there. Um, and like I said before, if you guys have anything else you need, well, you're welcome to reach out to me or the data management team. We're here to help. Thanks, guys. And uh, see you next week.